let's go to movies. So, um, how did you get the gig, and um, what did you have to do for the first movie you did, which was Kill, uh, kill or <coughs> Be Killed? That uh, one of yeah. your other's great, massive, big budget. Uh, no, that small budget. <laughs> <laughs> we were called on by a company that was like called Kalani Studios, and they wanted to make a film in South Africa, a martial arts film, Kalani, because it was getting very popular in South Africa. And um, I was approached by the director, who said, could you we provide all the people for it? But please, it's a low budget, we, we're not paying anybody. But we jumped at that, oh, thank you. She says, you'll be in it, Norman Robbins will be in it, even Keith and people like that. I believe you picked your own role, like The Fly. You <laughs> named yeah. yourself The Fly. <laughs> <laughs> so do you remember the time when your father did the, uh, the movies? Yes. Yes. Very, very that was exciting. exciting. We yeah. loved it. A lot of preparation, going to the fight choreography and so forth. Yes. But we, we just loved the whole idea of doing the movies. And we went on set. We went yeah. on set a we couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. That was the watch. best part. I went on set a lot, I remember. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it was very interesting to be involved with um, all the different projects. Because you had solo karate as well. You had a few yes. other documentaries. Yes. Yeah. Story. And keep fit with karate. The, yeah, there was always something started, happening. Yeah. 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 I started in that actually. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's later times, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's not like cringe worthy. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there was always something happening in the yeah. Schmidt household. That's one mm. thing. You never it was got so bored. so exciting. <laughs> it was really a fun childhood yeah. growing up there. There was something happening non stop. James Ryan, four times world martial arts champion, a living weapon of destruction. In 1980, he accepted the challenge to take on a battalion of karate commandos and kill or be killed. And in the arena of death, let the fun begin. When black belts clash, steel fists collide. In a martial arts free-for-all of global proportions. This is the all-new Kill and Kill Again. The one motion picture that will annihilate every concept you've ever had about the limits of human strength, conditioning, and endurance. Kill and kill again. But winning is just the tip of the sword. What counts is the hard training in traditional forms. The dedication, the repetition, the pain. This is where it all begins. You're about to see two kind of training led by Tanaka. This kind of training is a fight against imaginary opponents. Developing of both the inner and outer man. The transition from training to competition is like an emergence from the chrysalis of inner concentration into the probing light of competitive kata. For if karate is a language, then kata is the poems and philosophies of that language, or to relate it back to the samurai traditions, the honing and tempering of the sword. Next up is kata, the Japanese team. They've gone beyond sheer balletic movement. Their katas are theorems of self-defense, applied. Finally, the Japanese, as noted, classic exponents of the art. Three modern-day gladiators moving in precise harmony, their shadows on the arena floor looking like ancient birds of prey. The slow-motion camera reveals the impossibility of complete perfection, even from these, the world's greatest karate athletes. finals with European champion Bruno de Michelis versus Masahiko Tanaka. Tanaka's legendary speed and power ensure victory for Japan. 30 seconds. 
With your place of training in South Africa quite a mecca with uh, lots of famous martial artists dropping in, like Chuck Norris, uh, Dolph Lundgren, uh, Terry O'Neill, <laughs> and champions like that. And you had you sort of hosted teams from around the world. Yeah. Well, that was a bit later, you know, it was more in the 70s, 80s. Oh, yes. Yeah. But, um, you know, you talk about them. Each one it was a bit different to the other. Chuck Norris was a real gentleman, I've got to say that. And um, when you talk to him, he was very natural. He, he was doing it for McQuaid or something. I'm not sure if that's the right Lone name. Wolf McQuaid, yeah. Is it? But yeah. he was there to promote it. Yeah. And he'd heard about me, and then we, um, he and his entourage visited my dojo. A few pictures and that, he treated everybody, he didn't train him with anything. He says he's got his own training and he doesn't want his teeth knocked out. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he'd said. And not that yeah, he would have pro probably yeah, knocked ours out, I don't know. Yeah. But nevertheless, we went for dinner that evening and I had all my karate co lined up outside the cinema sort of promoting his movie. And that was our little thing with him. Wow. Yeah, cool. Tolf Rudgren, I admire as being a real top gentleman and a tough, tough man. He was like, to me, I don't know if you were 6'2", 6 6'3". 6 I think he's bigger than that. He <laughs> came to take my daughter out, yeah. Tia, who you'll meet. And um, he'd, uh, he'd done all the right things. And he'd been training with us in the early birds. Yes. And uh, tried everything. Really was keen. I worked against Keith a lot. Keith Geyer, my son-in-law who teaches here in Australia, who runs a, a big organization here. But in those days, then Keith, and he would spar, then I'd spar a bit with him, and he'd move around, and he, he had, he fought one guy. And we had a stage at the end, like a big hall that we trained in. Yes. And he did, he turned it a back kick, well, this guy took off. It was like he'd been pulled with a rubber, rubber <laughs> things down, he landed on his back in the stage, whoa, not again, thank you. Yeah. That was him. Definitely Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I don't think you were uh, in heaven for one yes. that was just a very short one. Yeah. 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 yeah, definitely. Uh, I think what, what influences all the people around us that saw the famous people come to our house. And now, you know, it's more at the time you sometimes don't notice it, but later yeah, we it's like, young. what? Chuck so yeah. Norris came to your house? Mm. It's like, wow. Yeah. yeah. Sam yeah. Jones. Yeah. And oh, we, the Flash. Yeah. Yes. Flash oh, Gordon. Gordon. Flash Gordon. Gordon. Yeah. And Jackie Chan, but I don't know if you guys met Jackie Chan. It was Dean and Keith met Jackie Chan. Yeah. Jackie Chan. Who else? Oh, David Hasselhoff. Oh, yeah. the Hoff. I, the, the Hoff. I actually ended up marrying Keith through um, David Hasselhoff because Keith was bodyguarding him and I oh, wanted right. to meet him. So oh. <laughs> Keith <laughs> used that as an opportunity. So when he came back the second time, yeah. Keith actually said to him, said to David Hasselhoff, you know, I, for you to thank because it was through, through you being here that my wife and I got together. 